Bye. Short bus debate club. It's a bus. Rolling. I can get on board. <laughs> Hello, I'm Darren Jolly. <laughs> it's time to get this short bus started. So let's roll. And on with the show. The opinions in the following episode from Brian Courtney do not necessarily reflect the opinions of Short Bus Debate Club, Darren Jolly, its affiliates, or sponsors. Hello, this is Brian Courtney. Thank you for joining Short Bus Debate Club. I had to give that legal disclaimer because we're probably going to talk about some legal bullshit. Um, Darren Jolly's across the table from me. We don't have affiliates. (laughs) We also don't have sponsors. Yes, we don't. (laughs) (laughs) Which means we're free to say whatever the fuck we want. But I just figured that I would do that for a laugh. I know. I thought it was fucking funny. Um, well, you like my dad. You you laugh at your jokes harder than anyone else. Sometimes. In, sometimes I can fucking roll a room, dude. In, in that instance, though. Yeah. You, you were... <laughs> yeah. You were pleasing yourself. <laughs> you were comically jerking yourself off. I was. Um, okay, so this episode, I said we were going to talk about some legal bullshit. Uh, we are going to talk about... The indictments that were just now uh, given to the Cheeto or former President Cheeto. Um, For those of you. Former President Cheeto. (laughs) Cheeto Mussolini. Um, Don't worry, we're disrespectful to pretty much everybody in power. Yeah, and. You've got to earn respect. It's not given by title. Uh, Let's see. So I I don't know exactly where to start. I know that I wrote down a whole bunch of shit. um, Because before we did this episode, I had always thought that there was a constitutional amendment barring indictment and or arrest of a sitting president. Doing some research, I figured out that's not the case. Um, So historically, they, I know that they pulled Ulysses S. Grant into custody for speeding, but he paid a fine and, and left. There was the Nixon shit in the 70s. For speeding. Uh, Yeah, I guess he was probably riding his horse too fast. I don't know, which I thought was weird. I didn't realize they had speed limits back then, but probably in cities they did because, you know, everybody was just walking around on the road and whatever, so they didn't want anybody to get run over by a horse. So was he got? did he get a ticket while he was president, while he was being a general? In the aftermath of being a president? No, it was when he was president. While he was president. Yeah. So maybe it happened in Washington, D.C. It didn't say specifically. I'm sure if I did some more research, I could find out. Um, Then the Nixon shit happened in the 70s. Ford pardoned him immediately after he resigned. So we didn't have to worry about, you know, arresting a president then. Um... Bill Clinton cut a fucking deal because of him lying about the Monica Lewinsky thing. So that never happened. I I mean, as far as being indicted, because he he cut a deal with special counsel for giving. They were in the in. I don't let you get to the 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 thing that you found like more, but in that it seemed like they were more like uh, the limitations were more concerning what happened with Jennifer Flowers than it was with, with Monica Lewinsky, at least the one I read. Well, that. that could be. I, I didn't get into the whole thing a lot because, I mean, the Bill Clinton thing happened. We know that, you know, you just she wanted blew to grab him. onto the cigar. You were just grabbing onto the cigar. Why would you want to grab onto the cigar after that? Were you going to smoke the cigar after that? After she smoked the cigar? 
What the fuck are you talking about? There, it, with, it, with Monica Lewinsky, there was something about a cigar that was twatted, if I remember correctly. Oh, he may have fucked her with a cigar. I don't know. Not tweeted. It was pre-tweeted. It was just twatted. I mean, this is really obviously if, in, the, in the annals of indictment. If you remember all of the, the media from the time, he always said, I did not engage in sexual intercourse with Monica Lewinsky. I don't think those are the words that he used. But yeah, I got gotcha. you. And yeah. he did repeat the same thing over and over again. And I go to like family functions. I go to like Thanksgiving and my, my dad's oldest brother was still alive. So he would be wearing, you know, impeach Clinton badges on him. And then my cousin Heather would be there fighting with him. Cause Why would you want to impeach somebody just for getting some trim? Don't the, the the only thing I was going to try to illustrate is that <clears throat> my uncle was uh, he was a card carrying Republican, my cousin was a card carrying Democrat. Uh, Your levels. Anything that they would say uh, would be <clears throat> focused on or about. I'm going to bring this up because it's really <laughs> fucking low. Um, anything that uh, my uncle would say would be you know a Democrat's the devil. My and then anything my cousin would say. A Republican's the devil. There's like no critical thought in anything, no nuance. It was just he actually, when he pulled out his impeach Clinton thing, he had one for um, Kennedy. He had he had like every you know he had one for uh, Carter. I, I mean I can't like he was the nicest guy in the history of the universe. How that motherfucker got to be president, I got no idea. Although he was a pure neoliberal, but um, he, everybody that was a famous, you know. Democrat he had a pin for that was like laid out on the table and then he put the Clinton one right next to it. I I know there were a lot of people like that and the media was going fucking crazy and I wish I could remember exactly what he said. I think sexual relations. I did not have some relations. relations yeah. Just relations. I did not have relations with Monica Lewinsky. Or with that I did woman. not have relations with that woman. With Jennifer Flowers. With any lit litany of women that I did have relations with, but will not admit now. There, well, there were a bunch. But, so the reason that they were going to indict him was just for giving false testimony. It was a perjury yeah. thing, yeah. Because um, perjury was an impeachable offense. Impeachment is different than indictment. Yes. So. But then, so that's where that the impeachment... Uh, there's a rule that says you can or can't, after you're impeached, be prosecuted. Um, we can get into all of that later. My my point is, is that up until Trump, for the most part, no president had really, truly been indicted. And the reason I say really and truly is because Nixon, I mean, the Supreme Court has, um, what is it? There was so a, it's U.S. versus Nixon, 418, uh, U.S. 683. Um, that was the Supreme Court case with Nixon. Um, but then again, you know, Ford pardoned him immediately after. So, but regardless, there was a there was a need after Nixon for the Department of Justice to go in and spend some time meditating on the question of what. What is unique about the president concerning indictments, whether it's something first, they, they, the way that they started it right was any anybody that's in, in, in that formal higher level civil service. They said, are they indictable? And then they went through that rigmarole to say, well, it wasn't just higher level at that point. They were talking about anybody that's in public service, any civil servant that had been. I don't even think they specifically said voted in. Um, so then they eliminated the House, they eliminated the Senate. And they were they talked a bunch about cabinet members and shit like that in there. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so appointees, yeah. things like that. Uh, and then eventually it just kind of ended up with the president. Because, I mean, obviously, Ollie North was indicted, mm -hmm. so they were okay with that. Generals are fine. Well, yeah, but they're, they're not indicted. They're, um, what the fuck do you call that? They get... Uh, the military tribunal. Yeah, but what's the why? Why can't I court martial? Right. 
Yeah, but I th I thought he was actually in a real court of law. Yeah, because have to go back to generally, I mean, in a military tribunal when you've been court-martialed, I don't think you can plead the fifth. There are different rules. And he pled the fifth a lot. And you can't talk shit about higher level officers and blah, 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 blah. Right. And they wanted him to, well, name names. Maybe that was just because he was in front of a Senate committee. I'm trying to remember, but I was only fucking like 12, dude. Well, that was that was a weird situation because it had to do with all that the missiles in Iran and well, the right. Contras and all that shit. And that's what I was going to say, too, is because now, I mean, so Ollie North probably knew, but now it's coming out that more and more people are saying Reagan knew. There were definitely people in the CIA that fucking yeah, knew. Yeah, no shit. So they're selling a whole bunch of coke for money to buy weapons to sell to so that the country the sell them to the to sell them to Iran, right? Because we weren't allowed to sell weapons to Iran, something to that effect. So and every time they asked him a question about the Department of uh, Federal Emergency Management Agency, he would he would say, "I cannot answer that question in open session. I cannot answer that question or nobody. If we go to closed session, then I can talk about that." Yeah. So I mean, they're they're protected. Because of the way we've structured everything, they're protected, you know, if they're in the DOD, then it's for security reasons that they can't say anything. Uh, so there's a lot of protections built around these people, but specifically... When it's classified stuff. I don't even know that it has to be a classified Okay, thing, we're, we're getting way too fucking far off. The, top the of protection there. is there for a lot of them, but we mm -hmm. wanted to talk specifically about the president's yeah. stuff. So what we find out is that at the top, because of the unique position of an executive, they are not indictable while they're sitting. But that is a big caveat. And this was such a difficult question that, like you said, after uh, what happened with Clinton... So 1973, they write this gigantic treatise on why it is or what, what under what circumstances and who can be indicted. And like you said, they found it that everybody can be. Uh, and the, the question of these Ollie North individuals that we'll, we'll, we'll put that one in uh, suspense for another day. We'll, we'll come back to that one at another point in time. But uh, everybody's indictable except for the president all civil servants except for the president and they decided to reopen it because there'd been so much case law and because because of clinton's unique situation and at the end of the 90s your levels are still fucked dude i'm talking right into the fucking thing i'm not saying you're not i'm saying your levels are fucked and it's turned all the way yeah, up too I don't, know what, I don't know what to say i mean i'm here okay well is it better now it's better now because you didn't have my fucking my mic, on? my mic wasn't on, yeah. so I won't sound like anything for the first 10 minutes. That's good. <laughs> you want to rewind and start over? No, I don't want to fucking rewind and start over. Well, it's only 10 minutes. Um, okay, so one of the things that I wanted to mention here, because I think it's important just for this episode and, and possibly future episodes, is there are three main ways that a law is created, right? So there's oh, a bill becomes a law. Obviously, legislation, um, precedent, which is the court ruling on something, or referendum, which is the people putting shit into action. And most of the time, a referendum ends up becoming an amendment. Uh, referendums aren't used at the federal level, but I just wanted to give you guys a heads up, one way or the other. Um, the reason that I mention it is because since no court has had a chance to rule on any of these things, whether we're talking about Ulysses S. Grant or Clinton or Nixon or whatever, precedent hasn't been set. So since precedent hasn't been set, that's why the 1973 memorandum came out. That's why they followed up with it in 2000. And... Darren and I are talking about the Department of Justice 
memorandum from both 73 and 2000. But there's also the Office of Legal Counsel that wrote memorandums or memoranda in both time frames. And who knows, there's probably another department within our government that has written a memorandum or two regarding whether or not we can indict the president. I can understand why a sitting president cannot be indicted because, and the Department of Justice, you know, said it straight out, we do not want an indictment to fuck with their ability to do their job. And I get that. The president, at least through, you know, his minions, has lots of stuff to do. You know, he's, his minions? he's <laughs> sending people here to blow something up. He's sending people over here to, to do this. Uh, he's sending people down there to buy Coke. He's doing all kinds of different stuff. So I can understand why we, sh we can't indict him while he's sitting. Now, if he was doing shit that is outside of his purview while president that was illegal, I think we should be able to indict him. And... If he did some really bad shit, like war crime type stuff, I think we should be able to fucking indict him afterward, even if it was within his purview. Well, a crime's a fucking crime, you know? I mean, if you're committing war crimes, then you're a fucking criminal, you know? I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't know that either one of those comments are controversial at all i mean i think there's a problem in the sense that like you there the concept of uh what did the what did ford do for nixon again pardon him. yeah pardoning like like so say say trump didn't run again right after after the the, the debacle of 2016 to you know 2020 whatever um not saying that this is any less of a debacle than that is but uh, if it was if there if he had a counterpart a Republican counterpart that immediately came in afterwards and pardoned him like they did for Nixon, that's so fucking incredibly problematic. Like in the same sense that, and this is going off on another little tangent, but it applies at this at this moment because it's something that's happening at the same time that the indictments are happening. Uh, Biden's son uh, being charged with. All the shit that was going on with uh, Ukraine. Um, what's the name of the company? I always fucking my brain always goes right out my ear sometimes. But uh, not registering as a, as an agent, um, and then uh, trading on favors with his father, um, getting paid seventy eight thousand dollars a month or whatever it was. For I think it was eighty three. Eighty three thousand. Okay, yeah, sorry. So I I don't I don't even exaggerate. You know I I, I go under. Um, but uh, he's going in to get you know, uh, prosecuted for tax, tax evasion or tax, not, not paying his taxes on all this money that he's earned through that, uh, through that company that you'll find here in just a second. I'm trying. Um, and, uh, the deal that they had tried to cut, uh, was so, so much of a sweetheart deal that the, uh, the judge who was appointed by Trump and whatever, you know, this this is this is the shit of where we're at right now, right? Is it is now we look at who's scoring for which side based on who it is that they came from, what their political disposition is. Um, this deal that he was going to get from from the uh, uh, the Department of Justice was bullshit. It was it, it it basically gave him immunity from prosecution for everything that he had done in relation to this stuff in perpetuity, and that's not fucking okay, right? So. There's a tendency inside of the system that we're living in right now where legal justice is becoming an incredibly precarious thing, right? And uh, Trump's in a shitty situation uh, because he's a douchebag, first and foremost. But beyond just his relative level of douchery, uh, he's a political opponent to the existing president 
So uh, what do you do? You know, you, you create these indictments, you set, up, you set them all in a row. And when he decides to uh, run for president again, which you knew was going to happen, you start rolling them out one by one by one. And of course, the Georgia, the Georgia indictment is going to come right behind this third indictment, which will be about um, election interference in Georgia. You know, I'm not, not sure exactly what that'll play out to be. And of course, we'll be waiting with breath that's bated to find out about that. But uh, Hunter Biden playing on his dad's power position, um, clearly, uh, if he was supposed to learn from some lessons and be a be a some sort of a moral individual, he's he's about as sluggish as they get, which I guess follows in his father's footsteps, who was the, uh, you know, the the author of the crime bill and. Uh, Don't forget the credit card the credit companies card in Delaware. Yeah, and uh, making sure that uh, nobody that has um, student loans would ever be able to declare bankruptcy on it, because that's a kind of debt that's different than any other kind of debt. Because if we were able to forgive that, then we wouldn't be indentured servants for the, you know, the the duration while essentially our social security is going to disappear at the same time. So you're going to suck the blood out of us and not give us anything to survive on when we get old. All right, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going off on that. Dude, I've looked at like three w websites and all of them make reference to his hard drive and this and that, but is it? I don't see a company name anywhere. Uh, uh, you start talking for a second, I'll get it. So, since you mentioned the the Hunter Biden thing, I I think that this may be an important point. So, Hunter's dad, Burisma. Okay, so I I did find it. I just didn't realize that was the name of the company. Um, okay, so Hunter's dad is president. Donald Trump used to be president. Both of these positions are so powerful that if you suck one of their dicks, you're famous for the rest of your fucking life. You said right? Stormy Daniels. So they have the ability, and Trump did. I mean, he was putting people in positions of power within the government. Um, you know, they can they can move pieces around to make people a shitload of money. There's lots of things they can do. So I don't think it matters if they're a Democrat or a Republican. There is no fucking way that corporate America is ever going to let one of those guys burn. Unless one of them has fucking 20 teenage girls chained up in the fucking basement, there is nothing going to happen to them ever. And even with the girls, maybe not. Okay, so if that's true, then why have they taken aim at him like they have right now? Because this is, I mean, this is this is clear. I mean, like, uh, with, with the Cohen situation with the first indictment, uh, I mean, they, like, 35 counts or something like that of... Uh, using money from somewhere where it wasn't supposed to be being used from. I can't remember exactly what the bullshit here. The indictment is uh falsifying business records in the first degree and it's 30. Oops, let's go right to the last page. 34 counts of falsifying business records in the first degree. And that was just about the fact that Michael Cohen paid Stormy Daniels out of his own pocket at the beginning. And they paid him like, I don't know, like, three or four times the amount out of a different account. And it was supposed to, it was a, an account that was, I think if I remember correctly, designated for uh, funds for the campaign or something like that. It ended up being $420,000, I think, or 460 was actually what it was, I think. Well, I can't, I can't say for sure why they're doing it, mm -hmm. but they're, I just know that nothing's ever going to come of it. Well, something's going to come of it. Yeah, I'm sure he'll <laughs> get slapped on the wrist and well what's what's interesting about the third indictment right so the second indictment is all about you know it's about uh leaving declassified fucking papers around all it's like 34 35 account, accounts of leaving classified and, and not following through with when they said you need to give it give them back to us uh you say well i don't have them and then uh you say well turn over the fucking camera in your place that shows us that you have them sitting around laying everywhere and then you order somebody to destroy the camera. So those the counts all have to do with this this 
type of activity. Right. But it's, it's, it's reminiscent of the Hillary Clinton thing. Which is, it's yeah, and it's fucking hilarious because every other fucking minute, you know, if they want, if they want us to continue to put money going towards uh, Ukraine, uh, somebody will leak some bullshit declassified thing that says we need to send another $25 billion to U- Ukraine, and that motherfucker's never going to have anything said about it because he's functioning on behalf of the State Department at that point because that's the way that fucking shit works in intelligence communities today, right? I mean, it's all, you go after people that you want to, and you, you let everybody else go as long as they're advancing your policy agenda. But in the third instance, because this is the January 6th stuff, um, they don't charge him with anything like treason. They don't charge him with anything like, well, they're not going to charge him with treason because that means death. If if they happen to end up finding him guilty under some fucking miraculous circumstance. It's up, uh, it's up to death. It's not, you can spend the rest of your life in prison. I mean, based on the way that's written. So. Okay. But it's still odd because you're, you're, I mean, like, again, the charges, right? Conspiracy to defraud the United States. Conspiracy to obstruct an official proceeding. That was like the making the what what the VP was supposed to do on January the sixth. Obstruction of an attempt to obstruct an official proceeding. That would again touch on that that instance and uh, the verifi- verification of the uh, election and conspir- conspiracy against rights. And that's taking people's voting rights away because you're falsifying the election. But there's nothing nothing in there and. The other thing about treason is that would prevent him from being able to run. There's like three or four of them that would prevent him from being able to run for run for office, and he wasn't charged with any of that shit. Why? I mean, like the way that this shit reads, in the first twenty or thirty pages of it, you know. So like, a lot of it doesn't make sense to me, but at the very beginning, on in, in paragraph three, they give this very fucking odd qualifier, right? The defendant had a right, like every American, to speak publicly about the election and even to claim falsely that there had been outcome determinative fraud during the election and that he had won. He also He's also entitled to formally challenge the results of the election through lawful and appropriate means, such as seeking recounts or audits of the popular vote in states or filing lawsuits challenging ballots and procedures. Indeed, in many cases, the defendant did pursue these mes- methods of contesting the election results, his efforts to change outcome in any state through recounts, audits, or legal ch- challenges were uniformly unsuccessful. And then after that, they go into like the different conspiracy things in the next, in the next one. But a lot of the bullshit that he did is First Amendment stuff, like honestly. And I don't think... When you get into the space where where they're trying to rig things on a state level at the various different states where they're trying to, uh, you know, Wisconsin, Arizona, New Mexico, Michigan, Pennsylvania, there's one that I'm forgetting. I think there's seven seven of them, but uh, whatever. Um, They're they're trying to... um, that that's where the whole electoral schemes were going in, where you 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 try to say, well, I need to have a recount in Wisconsin. Wisconsin was the closest, I think. So like they'd say, we need a re- recount in Wisconsin. Two hundred five thousand people voted; they weren't supposed to vote. Uh, we're going to create a parallel set of electors through the, at the state level, but they need to have the states go along with doing that. And to the states' credits, and a lot of these states had uh, Republican uh, houses. They're like they're like, bro. You need to, if you want us to do this, you have to produce some measure of evidence. So they kept telling them to, to fuck off. But the way that they did that, that was weaselly and deceptive, but that's like typical fucking legal, legal chicanery, you know? Um, when you get to the part where you read about what they were doing with uh, Mike Pence, I would be very curious to hear him speak publicly about, because this when when they talk about the various different ways that they tried to coerce him and and direct him and push him and also um i think bill barr was still the uh uh the attorney general at that point um there were a lot of pressures that were put on him too so like those two people i'd be very interested but of course pence is the most important because he's the vice president he's the one that goes through and says the electoral votes are counted it's authentic you know why is the next president of the united states um 
that stuff gets a little bit weird. But honestly, and I, I, I don't want to agree with the bullshit crap that comes out of Newsmax or uh, Fox News, but I mean, when I look at some of the bullshit that fucking Hillary did, which was it, it, equally as fucked up. I mean, I didn't like, I'll, I'll get into it later, but she pulled an electric scheme in 2016. I had no fucking idea about it until I started reading this stuff and I looked up this uh, this idea. Well, she also left classified papers everywhere and She's fucking insane. contacted people with the fucking unsecured uh, a, a phone. Private, a private and, compu- and a private computer. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, th- there's a concept called faithless electors where it's happened several times throughout history, but there was a scam that she ran that was tied to this concept that is not, to be uh, perfectly honest, that far away from the kind of chicanery that fucking Trump was trying to pull by uh, bringing these parallel uh, false electors in these seven states uh, to bear to try to dispute the election through them. There was a difference because he he's telling them to do what, telling them to vote Republican instead of Democrat, but of course that's what he's positing is that the Republicans won in those states. Um, but having said that, uh, I don't see a lot of distinctions when I look at uh, the bullshit that the Democrats are doing and the bullshit that the Republicans are doing, um, given that context. No, and that's kind of so. That's why I said that they're not going to let any of these guys roast, or or girls, or they, or whatever the fuck. Um, because of how much power that they wield. So, I don't know, like 10 years ago, I can't even remember what the fuck got me going on it. Somebody argued with me about something, I'm sure. So, I told somebody that a large percentage of our sugar in the United States actually comes from sugar beets and not sugar cane argued back and forth. Anyway, I started researching sugar and looked up, there's these two brothers down in Florida, can't remember what the fuck their name is, but they're worth millions and millions of dollars because they own that much land and have that much sugar cane growing. But they also make a shit ton of money off of sugar cane subsidies, which is being paid to not grow sugar cane, (laughs) right? Well, in order to fucking hedge their bets, these fucking brothers paid lots and lots of money to both the Republican candidate and the Democratic candidate. Um, in 2016, a company called Renaissance Technologies, through its PACs and super PACs and whatever, gave, I think, $16.5 million to Clinton and $15 million to Trump. So... If you're putting that much of an investment, and I'm not saying that it's just corporate America, but they're a large component of it where, you know, Mark Zuckerberg's not going to let these guys fry because he wants to make sure that they let him continue to sell information. He also wants to make sure that he can, you know, set an algorithm to where it sends these people shit about Clinton and these people about Trump and so on and so forth so that they will pay Zuckerberg a lot of money in every election. So they want to make sure that no matter who wins, they're protected. Yeah, but you're you're suggesting that it becomes monolithic at that point in time, and I just don't accept that it's that simple. Trump is not Biden. Biden is not Trump. X and Y are not both Z. I just, I just like, and I don't know if it's like, it's like, cause there's, there's a reason why some people are coming at him hard right now and whether or not uh, they're really trying to pound him uh, to, to get him thrown in jail or if it's just a move to make him not be president not gonna work, bro. <laughs> they're gonna they're first of all they're gonna fail because a lot of people are getting incredibly disenchanted with the existing uh presidency anyway. Um and the people that you're trying to I don't who are you trying who it, so like if it's to try to make him look bad, I I think I mean he's he's solidly the fucking 
Republican candidate now. He, he might end up being the fucking president from jail. You know? I'm not saying anybody's trying to make them look bad. What I'm saying is... You're saying they're the same. No, I'm not. That isn't what I said at all. What I'm saying you, is... You're talking about money being fed into both sides as a hedge bet. Yeah, that they're not going to be... That they No matter who gets elected, they don't want... And, and I'm not saying that they're the same person. What I'm saying is... It's all... You're saying that the politicians are pulling some chicanery when it's actually the fucking media and the government that's that, doing that's, it. That's, I don't divorce them one from the other. If I say that they're doing it, they're working on behalf of finance, financial interests. After 130 episodes, I think that you should, you know, at least give me that. I don't separate political institutions from financial. I'm a fucking Marxist, right? I mean, by definition, power is connected to political economy. So... But there is a faction of capital, then, you, I could say it like that, that, that is coming after him on some level right now, for some reason. And whether or not that has to do with, because like when he got impeached, you know, it had to do with Ukraine. He wanted to retool the concepts of NATO on some level, and everything since Biden has got reinstituted to reassert our primacy in relation to that and to make sure that it's not going away and to divide Germany against Russia and to create all these really weird political e economic things inside the Ukraine for the long run. I mean, the BlackRock, the $700 million BlackRock, BlackRock building of, of Ukraine. Like, I, I, but I don't know if that's all. I mean, there's something like, I don't think that this, I mean, I think, military as it relates to political economy has something to do it do with it but somebody else is pissed off too there's got to be like because they are coming after him full fucking throated right now they didn't come after him absolutely because then they would have put that fucking treason charge or one of those charges that wouldn't allow him to run for presidency or maybe they hedge their position because if they put him in a space where he can't run for presidency presidency maybe they think that there would be some sort of like a militant backlash through you know, like January 6th, 6th to the nth degree or something like that. I, I, I don't know. But there's something else behind this indictment thing. Maybe. I don't know, dude. I, I don't trust any of them. And I think that everything that they do is just for show. I think they're saying, oh, well, we're indicting Trump. We're indicting Hunter Biden. Because we don't want you to know that we're also indicting all of the fucking pot people that we let go earlier this year, <laughs> which were none. But I mean, but they could go out and get good jobs because their felony possession charges went away. Yeah, I just they're always think guy. that they're fucking, you know, it's that look over here so that you don't see this over here. Yeah, but I still got it. I, I mean, I, I see I see the the dog and pony show, you know, but uh, because otherwise the treason charge would be there. That, well, that's why I brought it up in the yeah, first place. Yeah, I, I I know that, but I mean, if if it were real, if it was something that actually meant anything to anyone in this country, the treason charge would be there. Well, he's because he's becoming more popular because of this. Inside, of, he. I mean, dude, I bet diamonds to dollars if the fucking election was tomorrow, he would win. Well, it's not. You, but, you know my stance on people, so you're probably right. Mm -hmm. I mean, dude, Jersey Shore's a popular show. People watch the Kardashians. Jersey, people are fucking I don't think idiots. Jersey Shore exists anymore. It might not. <laughs> but... What was the name of that chick? <laughs> Snooky? Snoopy? Snoopy? Yeah, Snoky. Snooky. <laughs> so, um, when my daughter used to watch Supernatural, they put her on Supernatural as a crossroads demon once, which I thought was kind of funny. Really? Yeah. They're trying to be ironic, you know? Supernatural was not a good show, but sometimes they would do a stupid thing like that that would just be like, that's fucking kind of hilarious. Because she really is a fucking crossroads demon. And, dude, maybe, okay, so maybe 
maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they're putting pressure on Hunter Biden to get Joe to do something else. They say, hey, if you don't pass this or write this executive order or install this person in this cabinet or whatever the case is, then we're going to fucking cut your son's thumbs off. Obviously, that isn't really a punishment that we do, but if we send him to the Ukraine, we could do it. We could have them cut off his thumb. I, 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 I don't know. I mean, I, like, that's just... That I don't know what to do with. That That's just like talking about power, suggesting that somebody's being coerced through a space. I, I, and I know nothing about that. Mm-hmm. I, I know what I see in the indictment stuff because it's happening and it's happening in front of me. Like that's... Well, yeah, but you read the Biden and, well, you read, never mind. Okay. I, I get it. I'll, I'll leave you alone. I just, I, I don't know an answer other than I don't know. I mean, because I really think that if we were really plan- planning on taking him to court and punishing him for doing something wrong, then one of those charges would include treason. I would think, yeah, I would think that that would be, but he's, I mean, I'm curious to see how the Georgia one plays out, and I don't know why they're even going back to it, but he's going to end up getting like the the third indictment is first amendment to a point but as long as you can demonstrate certain communications between he and some of those other conspirators to where they're trying to affect outcomes both at the state legislatures where they're wanting to put the 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 extra electors in right and you can demonstrate that he was effectively trying to coerce mike pence to do whatever it was that you meant to not endorse the election in in one way or another. Like there were there's several different uh, trains of thought that they had in there. At the end, they're like just put it on a 10 day recess. That was like one of the last things that they said to him when they were trying to uh, went so when because you know everything got too crazy. They got everybody out of the Senate chambers. You know uh, as soon as they cleared everybody from the building and they brought everybody back in and then they finished it at like fucking two or three o'clock in the morning when it was all said and done. And he still had what they they, they kept saying conspirator number one or conspirator number two communicated with with uh um pence and said you know just put it on a 10-day hold you know just say we need to verify certain things with regards to the election results and he kept saying no 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 so here's an here's another possibility Mm -hmm. um because i mentioned at the beginning of the show that one of the ways that laws are created is by precedent so maybe Trump and all of his cronies want these indictments to happen because he's hoping he can make some sort of change, not necessarily to, you know, not to the First Amendment, but somewhere in the Constitution that will give him or future presidents more power. And again, that's speculation on my part. I'm not saying that that's I don't the hate case. Long, I don't hate long-term thought processes like that because most of the time when you see these false dialectics get put in place, there is a long-term intention. And I, I don't think that that's out of line. I mean, one thing that's painfully obvious is the fucking electoral college has got to fucking go. Like, it's it's nightmare relationship to all these different things to where... So like the thing that I said about the the hillary thing right so the faceless electors so um hillary had lost by 37 electoral votes um or trump had arrived at the number he was 30, 37 over the the 270 mark right so what these there was some guy from colorado and some guy from washington state i don't remember their names Bach, i think was the name of the guy from colorado but uh they they contacted all these electors um and uh, the idea was this, it was a uh, Hamilton Federalist Paper 68 plan. And the idea was that uh, you get these 37 uh, electors to go and to vote for a different Republican other than Trump. 
because you didn't view him as fit for presidency. So that would have brought him down below the two the 270 mark. And because the electoral college is first past the post, you got to get past 270. It would have made it so that the uh, the voting wasn't uh, legitimate at that point in time. We would have had to go back and do something again. Like that bullshit that she pulled and the same bullshit that they were trying to pull, like for our for ourselves, like as a, as a, as a as a population, like I I, don't, I think they like the electoral college because they can manipulate things and because it creates this litigious environment where we are, as in we being the uh, the general population, are living permanently at a distance from from power. Like uh, all all the shit about not wanting the uh, the masses to be able to flex. You know this is this is something that the electoral college would allow us to do. But other than that, I, can't, I just can't imagine what their their intentions would be with regards to, and I guess I just have to keep my eyes open and kind of see how it plays out. Yeah, I mean, I don't know why they would do it. I guess there's another possibility that the Department of Justice wants to set precedent and now make a change, and next year they'll write a new memorandum that says... Former presidents can be indicted and prosecuted while they're while they're sitting. No, no, I know you're saying that he's going to be elected. I'm saying he's because he just was indicted, mm -hmm. so he's not sitting anymore. Mm -hmm. So maybe because maybe they want to put that in the next memorandum. I don't. I don't know. Again, it's just speculation on my part um, because. While a memorandum is kind of a guideline on how you want to act, and without the Department of Justice, you're never going to get an indictment against the president anyway, because the FBI has to fucking serve papers. And, you know, so without the Department of Justice, it's not like some judge can be sitting around going, fuck that guy, Trump. I'm going to get him arrested. I'm calling a special grand jury. I'm doing all of this stuff. Because Why would the FBI serve papers? Because they're part of the Department of Justice. But it would just be somebody, it would just be a lower level person in the Department of Justice that would serve the papers. Well, I don't know why you said the FBI there. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. Because the FBI would do it. It would be a fucking federal agent. A fed, not, not a, whatever. It wouldn't be an FBI agent. What agent would it be then? It would be somebody from inside the Department of Justice. Which is the fucking FBI. No, I mean somebody inside specifically. A lower level person, not... Not a paralegal or an attorney. It's going to be somebody like that. Yes, a lower level person. Yes. Whatever. Carry on. <clears throat> um, a memorandum. So maybe they're writing a memorandum so that, you know, they're toothless position can change slightly in the future i i don't know but i do see a lot of weird shit happening with it and it's odd that they're never done it's like trying to make a uh an exclamation mark on something yeah, I, I do believe this is personal on some level, though, dude. It has to be at least a little bit personal. Everything's not staged that perfectly. I don't; those actors are not that fucking smart. Some of them have some intelligence, but they don't have the ability to move every fucking piece in place. I just I can't buy that. Not entirely. I don't understand which pieces you're talking about. But I mean, investigations are run against criminal enterprises all the time, which probably have more moving pieces than just the January 6th thing or, or the bribery thing or the Monica Lewinsky thing. Maybe Watergate had a shitload of fucking moving pieces, but um, I guess it just depends on the investigation. There, there were a lot of moving parts in this one. I, I, I suggest reading the indictments at some point in time. It's worth it. 
Well, but it took a long time for it to happen anyway. I mean, maybe that is because of all of the moving parts. And the fact that he was sitting in the, the big chair. That You know, like I hear a lot of people say this should have happened quicker. But, like, I just kept thinking about that stupid kid that was stealing money at our station. And, like, how long they let that happen with him on camera before they moved on him, you know? Like, sometimes it does take, and yeah, because you have so many people, it's gonna take a little bit of time. I mean, the fact that they actually got to the point where this came out now is almost incredible. But well, they had infinite uh, resources at there. Well, and sadly, within an organization like the FBI or the DOJ mm -hmm. or whatever, you know, it, it's probably just like it is within a, a local cop shop, right? If you've got, so one cop says, you know what? I found out that so-and-so is doing this. He's our mayor. We need to do something. And the lieutenant is a big fan of the mayor. Maybe he's married to the fucking mayor's sister. I don't know. So he says, no, we're not going to do anything. So lieutenant quits or retires. New lieutenant comes in. All of a sudden, now the papers can go all the way through. Um, I think when you get to that justice, um, and I don't mean justice like serving justice. I mean our Department of Justice. That high level. If you're, you've got so many people at so many different levels that they're going to be biased in one direction or another. And maybe it is Donald Trump gave them their job or Donald Trump gave his boss the job and his boss is a big fan of, you know, me. So... I'm not even going to bother trying because I know he likes Trump. There's little shit like that that's going to happen and probably detour investigations left and right. Not, not as much for him as for other people, I think. He burns a lot of bridges, man. He lights, he lights them on fire, like left and right. In the second indictment, that read like some of the stupidest shit that I've ever seen in my life. Like He had these two people that worked inside of his uh, Mar-a-Lago uh estate place you know whatever the fuck that place is yeah and uh they pulled all those boxes back you know and they're they're sitting in this one room kind of like out where people can see him and in a hallway and like he tells them to move them back in this other place and uh the the department they the they start asking for them back you know they're like we we know you took these we need these back right so he's he like needs to go through them all first. He's like, so he gives him like uh I don't know, fourteen, eighteen of the many, many, many boxes that he had back, and uh, <laughs> he keeps telling him, I don't have any more. There's there aren't, there isn't any more in there. But he won't give it back to him until he's got to look through it and see whatever it is that he wants to see in in them, and uh, then they go and ask him for that that security tape and he goes and tells like him and those two guys are like the conspirators but they're not conspirators they're just dipshits that fucking work for him that are doing what it is he's telling them to do with these fucking documents and maybe maybe they knew maybe they didn't know but it just sounds like so much fucking like it looked like the three stooges to me the way that it fucking read like you you're you you look like you're fumbling through shit like fucking Barbara Bailey or something like that. I mean, it was just fucking embarrassing goofiness. Well, and I'm sure that that happens. You know, I mean, dude, I'm I'm not standing up for cops, local, state, or federal when I say this, but we always end up seeing either the absolute fucking best where some dildos standing there with a shotgun in front of a table with drugs on it and all kinds of money. <laughs> and he's like, this investigation took two and a half hard years, but we got it done. And now there's 
19 people who are in jail and another 22 on the run. Um, so depending on your outlook, that might be the absolute best, right? Or the absolute worst where they're going, hey, give me that box. <laughs> and the guy's like, no. Have you seen the security tape? I don't know what security tape you're talking about. <laughs> so the cops fucking roll out with their in there scratching their head and shit, kicking rocks. The media is only going to show us one or the other. There's generally never any fucking mid-range stuff there. It's not going to... Because if it's showing just an investigation going as it's supposed to, which is just a fucking grind, you know, doing research, finding out where they were on this day, doing that, that's boring shit. Nobody wants to see that on TV or read about it on the fucking internet. So it's either the best or the worst. Well, my, my lens for it wasn't media, though. My lens was just reading this stupid fucking, like... Uh, this guy did this, that guy did that, you know, this guy was told to go do this, move him from one room to another, and then, I don't know what you're talking about, you know, I'm scratching my ass, you know, like, <laughs> guys, <laughs> so, I didn't realize they had that on the fucking indictment, when you said that, I thought you were talking about a podcast or a fucking an article you no, read. It's the, so it's, uh, let's see, Walt, Waltine Nada and Carlos de Oliveira. And one of them, they're like these assistants that are like on the property. But, and one of them seemed a little bit more in the know than the other one. But they look like, in my head, they just look like guys who drove around in golf carts and got people iced teas and shit like that. Well, and again, based, you know, on the last name, maybe they were fucking nervous about of deportation or something like that being deported or i don't know maybe maybe they're legal but they were worried about their family, family. being yeah. deported yeah, and i'm not trying to fucking spin shit out of control and be a fucking conspiracy theorist i'm just trying to fucking you know say it, it's not always well, if, right in front and of you. If you're, if, but if you're like, if you work for Trump on a day on the daily and you're an assistant, right? I mean, you're his fucking bitch, you know? I mean, you do whatever he fucking says, you know, and thank you and this and that. Maybe you get a tip every now and again or something like that. Didn't, didn't Nancy Pelosi get in trouble for hiring people that were from outside of the country? I, 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 I mean, this was back in, I think, 2000, but... My point is, you are their bitch, whether it's Trump or Pelosi or Hillary Clinton. Well, whether or... you're, whether you're, if you're an assistant, whether you're from the, in the country or out of the country, period. Anyway, you're you're a domestic at that point in time. Yeah, a domestic. Oh. Is that the preferred nomenclature? I, you know, dude. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, he was his fucking golf cart bitch. Is that better? <laughs> I just, I think, I was just asking because I know things change. Like, I didn't find out until recently that we're not supposed to call them prostitutes anymore. They're sex workers. So I figured maybe domestic wasn't appropriate well, I didn't either. say anything about the Oriental peeing on the rug, for Christ's sake. <laughs> <laughs> That's a reference. Yeah, so was mine to begin with. <laughs> um, well, I had to come back around to the same, you know. I'm picking up what you're putting down. I got you. Um, so we're going to have another half to this. I'm, I'm just kind of curious because I sort of stated my opinion. And you said, well, no, a crime is a crime. Now, Again, you and I talked off the air where we were talking about the drugs and I said, you know, we need to tighten up these loopholes by creating more laws or, or making the, the legal ease more tight. I mean, to where there aren't these vague fucking phrases and ambiguity and all of that shit. So, yes, I agree with you. A crime is a crime. But 
do you think what I said was true? I mean, as far as, okay, so as president sitting there on the, the big chair, we probably shouldn't be able to arrest you because it might fuck up everything else. But as soon as you fucking exit that chair, we can arrest you. I think that right now, you really want me to answer this? My answer is going to go all over the fucking place if you really want me to answer this. Okay. Our, our, our system does not reflect the system of power that exists in the world right now, right? So like the U.S. citizens get to vote on power for a specific demographic of the transnational capitalist class, right? So in that moment, you have people like Donald Trump, you know, the real estate positions and all their power. And then you have other ones that tie to Burisma or financial uh, institutions in China, like Biden's son did. Um, and that's going to be a very eclectic uh, bit of people that are going to tie to tech, the tech industry in one way or different mechanisms of production in another way. They just want us to keep reproducing a system so that they can continue to do what the fuck they want to do without having any meaningful issue of uh, accountability in relation to it. The vast majority of people do not understand the way that the system is reproducing itself. I barely understand bits of it, but I at least understand what I just said, you know? So in that moment, I will like never forget like when Obama got elected in 08, how many places all over the world, like as, as much as I was hoodwinked by the fucking hope and change bullshit, right? All these other motherfuckers were too. They thought that the Bush shit was going to get rolled back and our, the, like the the fucking bombing with the the fight. What are the, I know, uh, he did more drone bombing he, yeah, than then, Bush yeah, ever by, did. By, by leaps and fucking bounds, dude. And, he and, also wrote more executive orders than Bush ever did. And 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 he said that he was going to roll back all that intelligence shit, all this stuff, that the, the powers that were enhanced with the Patriot Act 1 and 2 through the Homeland Security Act. He said he was going to roll back all that shit. That's, I mean, that's why, it, if you take Snowden out of space, that's why he did what he did, he said. You know, they, he, he was supposed to be the one to roll it back. So, like, people thought when he came into power that this was going to be a benevolent imperial leader, right? But there is no such thing as a benevolent imperial leader. What? You know, what you just said... Okay, because one of the indictments against Trump was essentially defrauding the voters, right? Well, it's it's in that third one. It's in part of that third one. Yeah. I I I don't I really honestly do not want more laws. I I would like to fucking just completely fucking raise everything and and start over. But literally or figuratively? Or both. I guess it depends. Like I, I don't know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't necessarily want to live in a fucking cave, scratching my ass. But I told you earlier, if I could, I'd fucking throw my phone away. Um. So yeah. I, but if you're stuck inside society. But I mean, raise. I, I'm go. talking about raising our democratic institution that is no longer democratic was it, was it ever i don't know for sure because i wasn't then there then it, it was for i wasn't then there landed white males yeah or at least yeah yeah um so i would like to create a law for cocksuckers that say shit like that where i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do this and then never do it. Yeah, but that's your fantasy world. I know. I didn't fucking say it had any substance. So when I said all the things that I just said, right, like at the, at the ass end of that comment is when I see what those guys did on January 6th, when I saw what happened in 2020, there's going to be a lot more of that stuff to come. Because there is no, like, one of the things that scares me the most about these indictments, right, is all of those individuals that were frustrated in the moment to where they did what they did then, right? This is going to send the message even further that 
you know, because they there are still like if you ask like Republicans if they think that the election was stolen, like there is a sizable portion of Republican voters that still believe that a lot of the the trite bullshit that he he said is factual that there were illegal immigrants voting in fucking New Mexico, that it was dead people in Wisconsin that they were dotting the, you know, in Georgia and shit like that. Despite the fact that the Republican people in the state houses and the electorals that went there said, no, this, this is, you have not produced any proof, but you still have this huge demographic of people that still believe that's true. If he gets indicted, if anything happens to where he can't get elected, or if he gets elected, I mean, what the fuck is that motherfucker going to do this time around? I mean, he's going to try to make it so that he can fucking go three rounds. There's no fucking doubt about that. I mean, he likes having the fucking power, you know? So there are people that are going to realize that they don't have political capital or power through voting in any meaningful way anymore. And when that happens, the weather underground on the left, you know, the fucking three percenters on the right, you know, I could go on for fucking ever, you know, I mean, we have to have a, I mean, when, when I said, you said you're going to raise it, you know, that's why I'm asking, because I don't know, like the idea of what we were trying to accomplish, nice, but the way it played out, and the way that it continues to play out is not so hot. Well, no, again, and, and we've talked about this on other shows. I mean, they they wanted it to play out this way. I mean, it was built for the elite, the aristocrats. This is a different kind of, of elite than what... I don't think this is exactly what they had in mind. I mean, maybe the idea, there's an insulated space. Yeah. Well, it's still, I mean... The elite are still the ones, you know, pushing the buttons, and it's the non-elite that are, you know, running the orders. Um, so it's still kind of working the way that they probably designed it. I, I'm sure that there are slight tweaks. I mean, you know, we have automatic rifles and fucking drones that can drop bombs and bombs that can be launched from you know 2,000 miles away so it's, VR it's slightly glasses different. and NFT right <laughs> <laughs> kind of fucking weird right now um and I don't know if I would raise it all I mean but we definitely have to make some changes and the the electoral college i don't think should have as much juice as they do because all that does is create a system to where like everybody thinks trump has so much juice and yeah he's he's got power but the gop is the one telling him what he can and can't say for the most part they say okay you know you can say this thing over here and don't worry they like it when you cuss, so go ahead and say stupid shit with dirty words laced throughout it. That's that's fine. Um, but if he was fucking up, the GOP would pull him. Dude, he's not the same kind of person as Kevin McCarthy is, though. He's he's different than like I don't know that he's fallen so in line. But like I said, like the tension between transnational and, and national capitals comes to bear when you have people that's financial positions are tied to certain concepts of uh, real estate and others that are tied more to uh, transient production positions and, you know, like uh, flexible capital and all that. Like he, he's, he, he wants a moat. I mean, that's that, like that his whole fucking, you know, like I we need to bring all this stuff back to America and we need to build a wall. Right. We'll but he out. just wanted to build a wall so that he could make money off of selling a bunch of fucking because concrete. He's a, yeah, he's a construction guy. But even it, but it's more than that, though. It, it, it created an image in people's head. And because he is a landed 
Like he, he, his rhetorical space is rooted in that jingoistic, you know, American, like the whole fucking time that the dude was president. Like I go over to fucking C470, I go over to fucking Mount High Pipe and Tobacco and go see those guys over there. And there would be like on Sundays and Saturdays, six or 700 motherfuckers with their Trump flags. This is the whole fucking presidency. They're out there just fucking like. A mile high pipe and tobacco? Not, not in front, but over on Quebec in the C-470 right there. But okay. it, would, it would bleed over into the parking lot because there would be so fucking many of them. And if you did not look like, you know, a nice, you know, Aryan motherfucker, then they talk shit to people all the time. There's that tat- There's a tattoo shop right there. Those guys got, you know, I know what they fucking said to them. There's a fucking Indian grocery store right at the end there. I'm sure that those people were not very gracious to those you know I, they don't know that they're indians they just know that they're not white you know but like uh the, that jingoism that nationalism that rooted in a certain concept of land within a certain you know like and you saw that in poland you saw that with false tomorrow in brazil like it's weird like uh hungary india yeah, yes 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 yeah modi yeah who was what was the hungry guy's name i can't fucking remember his name but yes, that was one of them that came out very, very heavy. Yeah, I mean... But they're all linked at the same time. Xenophobia was a big fucking draw. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the things about Ukraine that kind of weirds me out. Because I would have thought about like all those weird fucking Nazi motherfuckers in the eastern part of Ukraine to be more like that Trump kind of thing. But that's a... That's one of those enigmas that I'm just gonna have to look a little bit deeper into because I don't understand how that became a part of the financial disposition that is so fucking tied to the to the Biden family, you know? I mean Yeah, I don't I don't know how all of these fucking people I mean, but you know, dude Biden has been important, and and I I use that term loosely, but viewed as important for a really long time. And and like you said at the beginning of the show, he did the crime bill, credit card thing because of Delaware. I mean, so he's probably met foreign dignitaries for the last. 30, 40 fucking years. It'd be real easy for him to, you know, introduce a couple of people to his son or yeah, it just whatever. The Azov Battalion does not fit the bill, though. That's only that's just one weird deviation. Like, they're the we are the world. You know, we we we're for the CIA that hires the the trans Buddhist, you know, or whatever you want to. You know, something I I thought was kind of funny when I was looking at the political contributions, um, and I I should have looked up the Biden stuff, but um, so the U.S. government was listed on both Trump and Hillary Clinton, which is fine because they do, you know, a, a certain amount of matching funds. But the Department of Defense was listed on both. Um, I think Trump had the U.S. Air Force and the U.S. Navy, and um, Clinton had the Army and the Marines or something like that. But basically, the military-industrial complex was throwing money to both of them, DOD on both, and then a couple of branches within the DOD on both. Um so I just thought, oh, and the Department of State also. So that way they, you know, had the State Department's seal of approval. Um, Where's their beaches? I just, I, I don't know what, what would fix the problem? I know I don't want Trump. I I know I don't want Biden. 
um, you know, we're planning on doing a couple of episodes on third parties, you know, a couple of weeks. Well, no, next week, right? Because this next week, <laughs> the next set of four. Yeah, um, the next set of four. We're in, we're in fall semester now, right? I haven't changed it yet. I mean, I I can change it on this one because this is the first set. Well, I just I I didn't know for sure, but I mean, like Schools? everybody's starting in the next week or so. Today's the twelfth, right? Yeah. Somebody some start tomorrow, some start the week after that. I don't know about college. We're not, but we're like we're like uh we're like short pants school. We're like grammar school. <laughs> We're short pants, short bus school. So I'll probably change it real soon. Um, <laughs> either this set of four or the next. Solutions, though. I mean, that's a that's a tough road to hoe, brother. Where are we at in time? An hour fifteen. Let let let, let me think about that for fifteen minutes. Yeah, because I'm sure again, I can come up with a solution dude, in fifteen minutes. But I can't believe how much fucking hotter it is up here than down in my room. You don't know. You don't know. Dude, you seriously could fucking hang some meat there and just and, and he doesn't and he doesn't like the AC. So yeah, it's Jesus 80, 81, Christ. 80 degrees up here. Um okay, so hanging meat. I'm going outside because it's hotter than a mother rugger. Uh Cuddle we will be back too. real soon with the second half of indictment of a Cheeto. Seven two oh three three four roll. Short bus debate club at yahoo.com. Later. Thank <laughs> you.